Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters this week. <laughs> Manchester by the Sea. Now, this one has been out for a while in some parts of the country, but other parts of the country and the world may not have had the chance to see it yet. But I'll tell you, you are definitely going to hear about this one at Oscar time, so I might as well tell you, seek this movie out, because it is an extraordinary film. It's the kind of film that you don't usually get to see in theaters. It tells a small story set in a small town, but one with huge emotional pull that you won't be able to shake. I mean, this thing will charm you. It will draw you in. It will devastate you. Manchester by the Sea is quite simply one of the year's best films. Now, here's the story, which I'm going to keep deceptively simple. Casey Affleck plays Lee Chandler, a handyman eking out a meager and detached existence in a Boston suburb who is called back to his hometown after the death of his brother Joe, played by Kyle Chandler. Joe's will assigns guardianship of Joe's teenage son, Patrick, to Lee which should presumably mean that Lee would move into his brother's house and move back to his hometown to take care of Patrick. But to say that Lee has demons within Manchester by the Sea would be both an understatement and a sort of misrepresentation of the central conflict of the movie, which, without getting too much into spoilers, is delicate, it's heartrending, it's complicated, and it's kind of beautiful. Now, one of the defining characteristics of this film is its feeling of authenticity. Director Kenneth Lonergan has created a very specific sense of place through the use of real locations, the long establishing shots, and the very, very subtle performances that he has coaxed from his actors. Manchester by the Sea feels like a real place, and the people that populate it, these stiff of her lip, salt of the earth types, they speak plainly, they wear their hearts, excuse me, their hats on their sleeves, and they treat their teenagers like the budding adults that they are. It's perfectly refreshing to see people interact in this honest way with each other, especially when the main character is by contrast, so closed off, and for a good part of this movie, an impenetrable cipher. And that is a testament to the talents of Casey Affleck, who turns in the performance of his career so far. Like all of the other performances in this film, it's not an extreme, histrionic, out there, oh, give me an Oscar because I'm shouting and gesticulating wildly kind of performance. But he plays in shades here that few actors have reached on screen. The movie gives him the breathing room to make his character wounded, closed off, bitter, capable of showing the turmoil beneath the long silences. And they are long. And yet, he's able to muster up the energy to take his nephew to school, or to band practice, or even, in a sort of hilariously low-key scene, be his nephew's wingman by forcing small talk with another teenager's mother. Especially once you know where all of that rage, that guilt, that emotional emptiness springs from. And I tell you, friends, you are gonna find out. And when you do, it will be intense, man. And you are suddenly going to understand everything. You know what else you're gonna do throughout this movie? Surprisingly, you're gonna laugh. Like I said, these are authentic characters and real people with real wit and heart. Whatever you decide, he can always stay with us if he wants to come up weekends. Do you want to be his guardian? Well, he doesn't we want to already, be my guardian. We've already for Christ's got sakes, a house. We're trying to lose some kids, kids at this point. And even when you get to a couple of stranger characters played by Gretchen Maul and Matthew Broderick during a diverting interlude in the middle, their weirdness feels authentic. It feels rooted in real character flaws, and that makes the drama all the more potent when it unfolds. I also particularly love the relationship between Lee and Patrick, who is old enough to understand quite a bit about life and death and girls. You actually have sex with these girls? Strictly basement business. What does that mean? It means I'm working on it. But he still doesn't have the perspective to understand the depths of Lee's deficiencies as a guardian and as a role model. They call your friends? I don't know. What do you want me to do? I'm not gonna bother you. I'm gonna just sit here until you calm down. All right, I'm calming it. Would you please just go away? No. Craft involved in Manchester by the Sea is invisible, and you never feel anyone trying too hard. None of the actors milk those bastard accents, which has become a staple of modern film acting. Manchester by the Sea just transports you so effectively right into this real place and into these people's relationships and lives that you don't feel the passage of time. You don't even feel the beats of the story, which means in maybe my only minor quibble with the film, it just sort of ends without warning and kind of without resolution. And for a moment, I personally had the thought, wait, is that it? Then, moments later, as I sat there and watched the credits roll, I realized that this feeling was just a byproduct of how effectively I had been transported, that I still wanted to follow the characters some more. They were family to me at this point. Manchester by the Sea was my home now, and now that I was leaving it, much like Lee Chandler, I was still destined to be haunted by what I had experienced there. Extra large bag of popcorn for Manchester by the Sea, a singularly emotional experience, an acting masterclass from all involved, and a triumph in immersive, subtle storytelling. Wow! Wow! 
Well, that does it for this edition of Movies That Pop. Don't forget to follow me, the Colonel, on Twitter at Movies That Pop. And click the icon right down there to visit our channel if you'd like to see more. And support us by clicking subscribe while you're there. And by clicking the thumbs up icon below. I'd like to hear your thoughts on Manchester by the Sea in the comments as well. Spoiler free, guys. Spoiler free. In the meantime, thanks for watching. I'm the Colonel. And I'm into, uh, strictly basement business. If you know what I mean.